In this episode we're gonna talk about decorators. We will see what they are, how to define decorator factories, how to use decorators with class methods, properties and parameters. Let's jump right in. At the time of recording, decorators are at stage 2 draft proposal to TC39 committee and even though they are not available in JavaScript itself, we can use it as experimental feature of TypeScript. So let's see how we can use them in our Rainbow application. We can define decorators as a special kind of declaration that can be attached to a class definition, methods, accessors, properties and class parameters. Decorators provide a way to add both annotations and so-called meta programming syntax for class declarations and its members. Tell you the truth, that does not sound very clear at first, so let's go ahead and create our own decorator and see how it works. Since decorators are an experimental feature of TypeScript, we're gonna have to go to our tsconfig file and we will enable experimental support for decorators. We will set it to true. Now we're ready to go and use decorator inside of our code. Again, you can find it at github slash oliconic slash rainbow. So here you go, this is the syntax. We'll put add symbol and we will call our first decorator component. This is syntax for class decorator. We're gonna see a few other kinds of decorators later in this video. At this point, component decorator is not defined, of course, but this is the way we use it with a class. So how would we define component? Luckily, decorator can be defined with a simple function declaration. So let's create function component. And this function will take argument target and the target will be actually our class itself. So to start with, let's just print out target to make sure that decorators are working in our application. Let's put this add symbol so we know what's going on and we will print out target. Let's save it. We can see that compilation went through fine and in case you are having any problems right now at this point, uh, make sure that you enabled experimental feature in tsconfig. Let's go to the browser and refresh the page to see if target gets printed out. If we check out the log, we can see that we have at symbol class declaration itself, our app class. Let's see what we can do with the target, how we can use the decorator in the real world. To make sure that everything is working as expected, let's also print this options value. We'll jump into the browser and refresh the page. So we can see we have options empty object app class. And don't be confused by this compiled version. We understand that ES5 gets into the browser. Component take can take any parameter, it does not have to be an uh, object, it can be just a flag and we can have true or false here. But in our case we will be using options. To make it more realistic, let's imagine that we want to use decorator in order to define element ID. So what we're gonna do for this, we'll pass object that will have ID as a property with value rainbow. Now in order to use it inside our function, which is decorator definition at the same time, we will grab target and we will define L ID on it and we will make it equal to options.id. Now we can remove this line right here and before I explain what is happening there, Let's go and refresh the page to see if everything is working fine. We see some, some problems with compiling and we will figure out this issue soon. But so far we see those errors that we are getting from TypeScript compiler. But application essentially is working okay. So let's go back and debug the problem with compilation. You can see the same error is happening inside of our terminal while compilation is happening. So it says that element ID does not exist on type app. So what do we want to do? We, would, we will put back the static element ID property on this class. 
So usually we can put another type checking on options object as we have done before. We will not create alias but we will just simply put ID as a string. Now we get in protection here inside of our decorator options object. If we put numbers it will let us know that we are passing something wrong. Obviously this is a very simple example of using decorator and but we can definitely see the value if we want to add more static information and somehow configure our classes in TypeScript application. So this was the our first decorator factory and now we'll go ahead and create a method decorator. So inside of our app class we have one method start on init and we can imagine that this method became an enumerable property on the prototype of app. So to prove this let's loop over app class prototype properties. We will log out each, each property. Let's go to the browser to see what is happening. In console log we can see this line printed out which is saying that start on init is actually an enumerable property on the prototype. We remember that in ES5 we got an option to define property configuration and we had an option to decide if we want property to be enumerable or not. But say for some reason we want to do something similar for our object but using decorator. So what we're gonna do we will create another factory decorator function. We will call it enumerable. Now let's go ahead and create the actual function. It will be similar to a component decorator function. We will want to pass a boolean inside so we can determine if property is enumerable or not. So we will call it exactly the same way. It's gonna be boolean. Just like in previous example with component decorator we will return function. But this time our function not gonna only have target but also we're gonna get property key and property descriptor. Fix our arrow function, make it a little prettier. Property descriptor itself is going to be an object and we have a standard interface provided by TypeScript for property descriptor. We can see that it has several properties and methods and we will be interested in enumerable property. We will try to change it to whatever value we are passing in. So inside of our function body Let's change the property descriptor property, which is enumerable, and we will set it to the value that we pass in. Let's go back to the place where we are using it, and we will put false here. So now we expect start on init method to be non-enumerable, and it should not be printed inside of our for in loop. So let's go back to the browser and see if it works or not. And as expected we don't see anything inside of our log, which means at this time start on init function is non-enumerable. We can also test our decorator and pass through to decorator factory function. Now we expect it to be printed again. Let's go back to the browser and as expected this time it got printed out. Let's refresh the window just to verify that again. Yes, it gets print printed out, which means that our decorator factory function is working fine. So let's go back and see what is happening here. We remember that inside of the function that gets returned from the initial call, we are getting three parameters, which is target property key and property descriptor. And what we are doing here, we are modifying the enumerable property of property descriptor object. So this was an example how we can use decorators with methods. Now let's go ahead and see another version of property decorator that we can use with our app class properties. So we can remove our enumerable example as we are done with it. And for this particular example we will create another property and let's simply call it version. It's gonna be string. Let's call our decorator just a prop. It's not gonna be a function factory decorator. It's gonna be just a simple one. It's not gonna return a function. We'll do operations right inside of property definition. So we'll call, we'll create function prop. Our function will be taken two parameters. The first one will depend on type of our property. So for now let's just call it param1 and the second parameter will be a name, name of a property itself. 
So for now, we'll just console log those two parameters that we are getting inside of prop function. Go ahead and see if it gets printed out. Let's refresh the page, clean up our log. As you can see, we are getting printed out two things. The first one is a prototype of our app class. Why we can say so? Because we have this function attached here, but we don't see any parameter is defined. And the second string is the name of property that we have annotated with decorator. As I said, this first parameter is different depending on the type of our property. So in this case, we just had a regular public property version. Let's make it static and see how it changes our first parameter. Let's go back. And this time you can see in case of static property, we are getting app class constructor function. So this is the difference between those two types of properties. The last decorator that we will be talking about today will be a parameter decorator, which we will implement on our start on init function. And for this purpose, let's reuse this version property that we had before as an input of start on init function to make it work. Let's pass something just for this example inside of start on init. And this time we will call our decorator rem. And as you would expect, we're gonna have to define a function. Just for the clarity, let's rename this to x. And this time our function will have three parameters. First one will be prototype or class constructor function. Then we will get a name of the function where we are using decorator for a property. And the third one will be index, index of the argument of the function. So we can see decorator on version parameter and function definition for param decorator. Let's clean up those couple lines. Yes, everything looks right. So let's go ahead into the browser to see what gets printed out. So as we can see, we are getting app class prototype. Start on it is the, is the function name and zero is the index of version parameter that we are passing in the function. So it works the same way as with property decorators. If we change the function annotation from public to static, we would get class constructor, as you can see right here. In this video, we found out what decorator factories are, how we can define class method, class property, and function parameter decorators. There is another type of decorator, which is metadata, and we will talk about it a little later in our course. So thank you so much for your attention, and please subscribe to TrueJS, and talk to you soon.